Well, hello, studio teacher friends. Welcome to the Beyond Measure podcast, your weekly shout out of solidarity in the music teaching profession. My name is Christina Whitlock. I am your host and self-appointed anytime piano teacher friend. If you have been searching for like-minded teachers who embrace things like humility, curiosity, and the fact that we will never know it all, look no further because you have found him. Welcome to your people. (laughs) Seriously, some of the best teachers from around the globe have rallied around this show, and we're so glad you're here with us today. So, without further delay, Let's get on with the show. You guys, today marks four years of the Beyond Measure podcast. I kind of can't believe it. Four years feels like a long time. When I first started this show, I figured there was a high probability that no one would listen to it, and it would have maybe a 10-episode run before I gave it up. I thought it might just be one of those itches that needed scratching, and then I could move on to the next project. Yet, here we are, four years and almost 200 episodes in, and I just can't imagine what my life would look like without you. See, there are several key aspects of this show that I think people resonate with, but the real, actual magic of this show is the listeners. That's you. (laughs) I know deep in my soul that this show helps empower the kinds of teachers this world needs. You, as someone who listens to this show, are the type of educator that makes a real lifelong impact on your students and therefore society. The audience for this show is made up of teachers who love what they do, who are committed to teaching students as unique individuals, and who recognize the value of lifelong learning. You are not afraid to think, to change your mind, and you love your people well, which includes me. There are just not words to express how much you have added to my life. That sounds cheesy as I say it, but it really is the truth. Your emails and your messages and your reviews and your support overall, it's just all so integral to keeping this show going. So I really just want to thank you today. I wanted to talk specifically in this episode about naming our core values. If you've never taken time to put actual words to the ways you want to show up in this world, it's definitely worth doing. I would love to know that today's episode inspires some of you to go make a list of your core values this week. So as usual, I'll lead by example, because whether you know it or not, there are five core values behind this podcast. Every piece of content I make for teachers is run through these five filters. If an episode doesn't fit these qualifiers, it doesn't get published. And that has happened. Conveniently, these five values also fit my studio teaching. So, same thing. If I need to make a studio-related decision, I filter it through these values, and if they don't meet the ideals, then I don't make that decision. I just thought it might be a fun use of my four-year anniversary episode to share my core values with you and maybe unpack them just a little bit. I'm not going to bury the lead here. I'll tell you all five of them up front, and then we'll dig a little deeper into each one. Does that sound like a plan? (laughs) Okay. In my esteemed role as your anytime piano teacher friend, every piece of content I make for Beyond Measure fits these five values. Authenticity, connection, humility, curiosity, and play. So that's the list. Authenticity, connection, humility, curiosity, and play. Play. 
So let's talk about each one. We'll start with authenticity. <laughs> if you subscribe to One Thought Thursday, which is my weekly e-letter for super friends of the podcast, I talked a little bit about this last week. A strong desire to show up in the world exactly as I am fuels a lot of what I do. I feel like I have a pretty decent radar when it comes to authenticity, and I absolutely hate when I feel like someone is not being their real self with me. So for better or for worse, I try to show up here exactly as I am. <laughs> I'm a little loud, <laughs> a little scatterbrained because of my nonstop idea generating brain, and I have a weird amount of enthusiasm that is not everyone's cup of tea. <laughs> it's hard for me, but I get it. <laughs> I laugh too much, which can sometimes lead people to believe I don't th take things seriously when I do. I have a thousand and one quirks, but I really just try to own who I am. And it's a good thing because I'm quite sure if I tallied up all of my life experience, being myself has landed me more acceptance than it has rejection, even if that rejection still hurts a little bit. <laughs> my second core value is connection, and that will surprise none of you. The impetus of this entire show was the idea that teachers need more time with other teachers. And yet, our schedules make that a real challenge. I truly wanted to show up here as a way to help bolster you through the work you do. What never ceases to amaze me is how much reciprocity there has been through this process. Because I show up for you guys, but holy moly, have you shown up for me times a million. And I am so grateful for that. I will continue to reinforce the importance of not teaching in a vacuum. I did a whole episode on that just a few weeks ago, so I won't rehash it all now. But just because you can teach without connecting with other teachers doesn't mean you should. Third on my list of core values is humility. Guys, this one is not always easy. <laughs> I would much rather show up here and say, I know everything there is to know about teaching the piano, and I'm going to tell you all the secrets of the universe I have discovered because I have it all figured out. <laughs> but that is not true, nor is it the voice that you need in your life. I've given this a lot of thought. Knowing what I know now, if I were not going to choose a career in music teaching, I would have studied intellectual humility. Intellectual humility, if you don't know, is basically acknowledging that you have experiences and biases that inevitably influence the way you think, which leads to this ultimate conclusion that, yeah, we can know a lot of things, but we will never know everything as it actually is. I don't know why, but there are few things that light me up more than listening to scholars talk about intellectual humility. I think it's largely because our society's lack of intellectual humility is fueling many of the worst aspects of humanity these days, but I'm also just intrigued by people who are so certain of things. Like certainty is so applauded in our world. The voices of certainty are often the loudest out there, but that doesn't make them the best. Like I have no clue how to help fix that in the world, but at least here in our little microcosm of music teacher world, I can actually help fight off this notion that there is one way to learn how to play the piano. <laughs> You have no idea how much time I spend sweating over whether I've shared too much here or if I've been too honest. It's not comfortable to share stories of my past mistakes or in some cases, my current mistakes. I would much rather tell you all my success stories and leave you with the impression that I am the world's most perfect piano teacher. <laughs> but in the end, 
I know that doesn't help anybody. So thanks for hanging around, even when I prove that I am a very flawed teacher and human being. (laughs) I am committed to sharing my experiences as they really are for better and for worse. (laughs) Fourth on my list goes hand in hand with that one, and it's curiosity. Again, I love asking myself if there is a better way. I love asking why we do the things we do. Our work is so beautifully grounded in tradition and legacy, and you know I love that about teaching. And yet, there are all these aspects of teaching that don't benefit from the rationale of, well, this is the way we've always done it. I'm so proud of the philosophies that this show has helped me carve out around reevaluating the role of at home practice in the lesson and understanding the weight we carry around the idea of unmet potential. Asking ourselves questions flies in the face of all those issues I take with certainty. Asking each other questions forges that piece of the community puzzle that I hold so dear. So I'll just say it again for the umpteenth time that we have so much to learn from one another, my friends. So much. Last but not least on my list of core values for my work, both here and in the studio, is play. Because really, guys... What is the actual point if we are not playing? (laughs) There are many things to take seriously in our work. It's a whole paradox, and you know I'm obsessed with it if you've listened to the show for a long time. But really, play is the whole point. It doesn't mean our job is always fun, but it does mean our job is to help others find their play. Whatever level of intensity they're looking for, we call it playing an instrument for a reason, right? Now, I've done a whole episode on play. I won't recap it all here. But for the love, we all need heftier doses of play in our lives. Fun fact, I have four framed images in my office that I've designed on Canva. I look at them every day multiple times a day. One of them is a design I made of these five core values. The next one says, how can I make this fun? Because again, we can take our work so seriously, but also recognize that it's not a life and death matter. We can believe, as I do, that our work is of the utmost importance And also realize that it lacks the urgency and required pinpointed accuracy of open heart surgery. I will argue all day that piano teachers and surgeons each provide a vital service to humanity. But our effectiveness is a slow burn over time. Whereas surgeons, for instance, have this teeny tiny window of opportunity to do their work. This means that we get to have time to play, which means we can ask ourselves, how can I make this fun? I mentioned that I have four frames in my office. Those are the two that are most relevant for today. But if you're curious, the others say, elevate the profession, which is kind of my own personal mantra for the work I do, as well as the other one that says, I will not apologize for this thing I have made, (laughs) which is an affirmation I wrote one day early on when I was struggling to share my work with other people. So yeah, here I am, guys, four years into my podcast journey, and all four of those framed images in my office give a glimpse into how I try to show up in this world I'm living as closely attuned to those five core values as I can. I'm trying to make it fun. I'm trying to do my part to elevate the profession. And I am, again, reminding myself that I will not apologize for this thing I have made. (laughs) 
there you have it, friends. My overview of five core values, plus a few bonuses there at the end. <laughs> and my hope in this episode is to inspire you again to write your own list of core values. And if you come up with one, I would love for you to share those with me. You're welcome to DM me on socials or send me an email at beyondmeasurepodcast at gmail.com. Whew. Okay. As we begin year five of this podcast, I would like to invite you to show your support for my work over in the Beyond Measure community, which is currently hosted on Patreon. If you are not already over there, you are missing out on incredible insights and relationships with some of the best teachers in our profession. And even if you want nothing to do with the bonuses and the community that I've found over there, if you have received $6 worth of value out of this work over the last four years, I would really appreciate you showing your support. Join for this month and stay for as long or as little as you want, but know that your small contribution joins with others to make a really big difference and it allows me to keep showing up here. For those who have already been supporting me there over the last few years, goodness, I just adore you. <laughs> Thank you for helping me do this work. It has been a most unexpected joy in my life. So now, friends, as I have done just about every week for the last four years, let's close with a toast. Studio music teacher friends from all over the world. Today, we're simply celebrating the power of community. This show is a beautiful representation of the goodness that comes with education, music, and investing in the people around us. I am so proud of this body of work and my role as your anytime piano teacher friend. And again, I just couldn't have done it without you. So I say cheers to you and cheers to four years of Beyond Measure. Here, here. <laughs> That's all I have for you today, friends. Episode 189 is in the books. And I will just say onward and upward as we continue to travel this road together. <laughs> <laughs>